going to throw a stone. Now this will be very uh, interesting graph is what I'm going to bring now. I'm going to project a stone. I think I'll, I'll go for a little bit smaller one. Here, ball or stone, anything, anything you can put it here. So this will be. Then what is the type of motion is going to ascent? Then, then, then it's going to descend, no? At t equals zero is what I projected. I, and so let this be point one. This let this be two. And again, it will return back to the ground three. So this will be, so here it will be velocity here the retardation is g so from one to two what is the type of motion uniform retardation two to three it will be freely falling and what is the state of the object at two it will it will come to instantaneous rest The object actually it will ascend and retrace path to make things clearly. We're just showing the path somewhere here. So don't think that it will take turn here. No, not nothing like that. So what conditions will arise? The object will just ascend for a moment. It will come to rest here. And from there again, it's going to descend back. It's going to retrace the path to explain things, all the things clearly. What happened? We are just showing the other path different here. Hope, hope everyone is able to understand. So what is the time taken for to take turn? No, it will not take turn. Why should take turn? It will just ascend, descend. We just throw any some ball vertically up. So what, what, what is the motion of the ball? It will ascend, then will retrace path. No, along the same path is going to descend down. Please try to understand. To explain things, we have just put this curve. Hmm? Okay, this will be the, uh, you can say it'll undergo retardation. So one to two, what is the path? One, two, it's, it's what it is, retardation. Then path two, three is acceleration. Accelerated motion, we'll write it, Ret retarding motion. Okay, let's write, uh, uh, what is the total? I, again, it will descend back, it will take time t. So I want the time of flight of it. I'll apply, so what is the state of this object? It's going to come and strike the ground with the same speed what you have projected. Let's see that. It's going to come and strike the ground with the same speed. So what is this V we have to calculate here? So it is going to ascend certain height, So will it strike with the same speed? We don't know. Okay, let's cross check on. So for path one, two, so the equation will be uh, here. What is the state of here? Instantaneous rest. For a while, it, for a momentarily, it will be at rest here. Same thing for here also, instantaneous rest here. So let's apply the first, we'll calculate H max. Applying that one, zero square, U square, two minus G h max what is h max equal to u square by 2g so what is this maximum maximite ascend it okay this is the thing what about the time taken to move from 1 to 2 0 equal to u minus g t12 
what I should call T1 to time of ascent. Now, from here, again, it's going to fall the same height, what height it has ascended, what height it has ascended, the same height it is going to fall, the same height is going to descend. So, therefore, here it will be b square minus 0 square equal to 2g h max. What is h max equal to u square by 2g? Let me substitute. 2g h max is u square by 2g. So finally, v equal to u. So the body is going to strike the ground with the same speed. So what is the conclusion? Therefore, the body will strike back the ground with the same speed with which it is projected. And what is the time of descent? So time of descent should be equal to h max equal to g t23 whole square by 2. What is h max equal to u square by 2g? What is this? Time of descent it is called as. Hmm. Time of ascent, this is the time of descent. Look at that, both are equal, no? So what is the total time of flight? The next part, total time of flight. Time of ascent, okay, total time of flight, we write it as time of ascent plus time of descent. So time of ascent plus u by g plus u by g. So it is equal to 2u by g. Or, or another method I'll show it with v equal to, uh, there's a very beautifully I'm bringing this idea. Uh, why negative sign? Look at here, why negative sign? Because the g is directed opposite to initial velocity u. So therefore this negative sign. Why, why negative sign for v? Because this v is directed opposite to u. And what is the convention when you're using equations of motion? If a parameter, like a final velocity, acceleration, and height, and the displacement. If they're directed in the direction of initial velocity, positive. If they're directed opposite to the initial velocity, they should be taken negative. Hope uh, you are able to notice this. I'll, I'll highlight with color. Minus V equal to U minus GT. Why negative sign? There's a condition. And we know the V equal to U. The same formula, both are same. No? This is by time of ascent plus time of descent here. This is directly applying equations of motion. Okay, maximum might ascend date, time of flight, all we have brought the equations here. Okay, after this, we'll go for the plotting of graph. This is something very important. Let me 